So in previous class, we have started with Laplace transform. So as we have seen, the basic definition of Laplace transform, it is uh, um, Laplace transforms are of uh, two types. One is uh, single-ended Laplace transform and another is double-ended Laplace transform. So Laplace transform of a function f of t, it is given as f of s, where s is the Laplace variable and it is given as s is equal to sigma plus j omega which is a complex variable okay so f of s is equal to integration of f of t that is the function into e raised to minus st into dt and the limits of integrations for single ended laplace transforms are from 0 to infinity and for double ended laplace transform it is minus infinity to plus infinity Okay, then uh, next we have seen Laplace transform of some standard functions and their Laplace transform. These are the f of t and uh, their Laplace transform. And we have seen here some basic properties of the Laplace transform. And then based on these properties and the functions and their Laplace transform, we have tried to solve this differential equation. So this is the differential equation given to you with these initial conditions in time domain and uh, we have taken Laplace transform of it and then um, we have clubbed the terms together of V of S and on another side the remaining part. Then we have factorized this denominator if factors are not there then after that we have made partial fractions of this and par, uh, as per partial fraction expansion we have found out values of a b and c and then we have taken the inverse laplace transform okay so what are the steps involved in solving the numerical uh, based on uh, laplace transform using laplace transform is that first write down the equation and then take its Laplace transform. So this equation we have written uh, here and then taken the Laplace transform. That is the first step. Then we have uh, done the partial fraction expansion and then we have taken the inverse Laplace transform of it. Okay, so this is the simple process of solving it. Now the Laplace transform of few basic elements. So we know that in first unit and second unit we have taken in electrical circuits we are using only majoritily three basic elements as resistor inductor and capacitor these are the three basic elements which we are using along with the uh, source that is the voltage source or it may be current flowing through the circuit so voltage current then resistance inductance and capacitance if laplace transform of these five elements are known to you then uh, and the standard functions laplace transform and the properties so we will be able to solve all the electrical circuit numericals okay so uh, this time and frequency domain analysis if we are doing frequency uh, so that is um, we are finding the network functions from this so time domain analysis we are already seen in first and second unit and now in frequency domain analysis even uh, in third unit first uh, part first half part that is the network uh, two port network or the network parameters which we have seen they are in the time domain and now we'll see all these two and half unit in the transfer domain or in Laplace domain. So they are the network functions. So electrical networks are easier to solve and analyze using Laplace transform that we have seen and in uh, it is the S domain transformation. Now if a resistor is there what 
we are expecting in this uh, electrical circuit is if a voltage source is applied across a resistor whose value is r then current flowing through this r is let us say i of t so now from this we can write if we will apply kvl to this particular loop we can write the time domain equation of this so that is v of t it is equal to i of t into r that is nothing but your ohms law so v is equal to ir so in time domain that's why we have written here suffix uh, that um, into bracket t that is v as a function of t i as a function of t okay then taking laplace transform of both on both the sides we'll get the if um, the function is v of t then its laplace transform becomes v of s so where this v is capital v now laplace transform of i of t where this is the small i of t its laplace transform is i of s where this i i have written purposely uh, purposefully as a capital i of s okay into r so that means if value of r we want to find it is v of s upon i of s that is nothing but your transform impedance so resistance value it is v of t upon i of t or it is same as v of s upon i of s so if we will transform it in the transform domain then also the value of resistance it remains the same that means if we will draw the equivalent circuit in transform domain then this v of t will become v of s i of t will become i of s but the value of r will remain as it is r remains as it is r okay so if we want to find its transform impedance then that impedance value r it is equal to v of s upon i of s and if you want to find admittance that is reciprocal of this resistance then it will be i of s upon v of s that is nothing but the admittance okay then for inductor if that basic element is our inductor let us say v of t voltage is applied across this inductor and current flowing through this is i of t so v of t is voltage applied across l i of t is current flowing through this inductor then from this trans, uh, time domain we can write the equation of v of t as Excuse me. Kuna ta. Tera tricky to kuna. Si kuna apple mic kuna ta on hai. Hello. Mic kuna ta on hai. Okay, fine. so for this inductor we know that v of t is equal to l dit by dt right so that is the voltage across this inductor it is given by l di by dt so that is l into dit by dt is the voltage across it and that voltage applied is nothing but v of t so v of t is equal to l di by dt now this is the time domain equation we'll take laplace transform of this equation so trans laplace transform of v of t it is becoming v of s l as it is a constant it will remain as it is l and laplace transform of now derivative of i of t so if derivative d by dt of i of t so if it is a derivative then d by dt of f of t what was the laplace transform of that it was s into f of s minus f of 0 right so similarly we'll write here laplace transform of this as s into i of s minus i of 0 where this i of 0 is the is in time domain 
okay now we know that initially as soon as we are applying voltage across this inductor this inductor will act as if it is a open circuit so since it is acting as a open circuit there won't be any initial current flowing through this circuit so that means i of 0 minus and i of 0 plus it will be zero okay this we have already seen in unit number 2 okay so this is the initial condition so initial condition is zero so this term will vanish so v of s will become only l into s into i of s so if we will find the ratio of this i of s on this side then it will be v of s upon i of s is equal to s into l right so this is the transform domain impedance of this particular inductance that means if we we'll transform this circuit in laplace domain then this v of t will become v of s i of t will become i of s and instead of this only inductor value l in time domain in s domain it will become s into l so we have seen for resistance it is simply r in transform domain whereas for inductor it becomes s into l where s is the laplace variable okay now if in a numerical if such values are given to you for a inductor of 2 henry resistance of 5 ohm then if you want to transform this particular branch in s domain then this inductor l value you have to multiply it by a small s that is the laplace variable so here the value is 2 henry so 2 into s will be the impedance of this and for resistance it will be remain as it is 5 ohm so this branch in transfer domain it will represent the value of inductor as 2s and value of resistance as 5s so if you want to find equivalent impedance of this in laplace domain it will become 5 plus 2s whereas here it will become 5 plus 2j that you know okay so that is in time domain this is in laplace domain okay now for capacitor if is that basic element is a capacitor then across this capacitor let us say voltage is applied as v of t and current flowing through this is i of t then we know that this equation of current in uh, which is flowing through this capacitor it is given as i of t equal to c into dv of t by dt that is current flowing through capacitor it is c dv by dt so from this we have written this expression i of t equal to c into d by dt of v of t now taking laplace transform on both the sides if we'll take laplace transform of this i of t it will become i of s c is constant so it will be as it is now laplace transform of this derivative d by dt of v of t so what is that if it is d by dt f of t its laplace transform is s into f of s minus f of 0 so here the laplace transform of d by dt v of t will become s into v of s minus v of 0 where this v of 0 is the initial condition in time domain now as we know this uh, capacitor initially it will act as if it is a open circuit so as um, it is a open circuit then uh, sorry um, uh, this will act as if it is a short circuit so as this capacitor initially suddenly if we are applying voltage then it will act as if it is a short circuit so voltage across this capacitor it will become zero as it is acting as a short circuit so v of 0 minus will become equal to zero that is same as v of 0 plus because this capacitor opposes sudden changes in the voltages okay so this term will vanish so this will become c into s into v of s now if you want to find impedance it is ratio of voltage upon current so v of s upon i of s will become 1 over s into c 
so that means for capacitor if you want to replace it in transfer domain that is this c should be replaced by 1 over cs so value of capacitor is c then it will be replaced by 1 upon c into s now in few cases if the initial charge on capacitor is known to you that is this term if it is not zero declared as zero and it is given as the initial condition if the voltage on capacitor is say v of zero if this is given to you then you have to replace this in time domain uh, in transfer domain as v of zero divided by s okay so um what is the overall conclusion of this if this is the component in time domain then impedance in s domain or transfer domain <coughs> z of s it is given as this if it is a resistance it will remain as it is r if it is inductor of value l then in transform domain you have to replace it by s into l if it is a capacitor value of c then you have to replace it by 1 upon s into c okay so i hope you can remember this you have to remember this basic formula is r will be remain as if it is r l will be s into l and c will be replaced by 1 upon s into c okay so with this let us try to solve one example which we have solved in uh, second unit so application of this laplace transform to circuit analysis so use laplace transform technique to determine i of t for t greater than 0 so this at time t equal to 0 we have pressed this switch current flowing through this this is the series rl circuit whose values are given r value is 6 ohm and l value is 3 ohm and the voltage source which is given to you it is 30 into e raised to minus t so it is 30 into exponential of minus t e raised to minus t is the input voltage source given to you now if we want to solve this in time domain it will take a lot of time because in previous chapter uh, that is previous unit we have solved such numericals but here the supply was only dc it was not multiplied by exponential term it was only having 30 volts or 10 volts or 20 volts or so and now here it is multiplied by some exponent term again so if we want to solve this type of problem then it will take um, at least one full skip or four pages to solve this particular problem but here you can solve it within one page using laplace transform so what we'll do we'll first transform this time domain circuit into s domain so if we'll transform this voltage the components will remain as it is so this is the voltage source this resistance this inductor and at time t equal to 0 plus if we want to draw the equivalent circuit this switch is pressed so this will be a short path so that i have shown here now in transform domain you have to take laplace transform of this supply voltage also v of t is given to you as 30 into e raised to minus t its laplace transform you have to take as 30 into f of s okay so 30 will be constant as it is now e raised to minus t if e raised to minus t is a function what is the laplace transform of that if e raised to minus at its laplace transform is 1 upon s plus a here a value is 1 so that is e raised to minus t so it is 1 upon s plus 1 okay so 30 upon s plus 1 is the voltage source now which is f of s or v of s now current which was flowing was i of t now in transform domain it will become i of s capital i of s now this 6 ohm resistance r is there so for r it will remain as it is so r value is same as 6 okay for inductor if l is the value of inductor you have to multiply it by s 
so it will be three henry given to you so it will become three into s okay so this is the equivalent circuit in laplace domain now apply kvl for this if you will apply kvl for this particular loop how you are writing it voltage source v is equal to i into r plus l into this current so this l uh, now it is a impedance given as 3s so 6 plus 3s is the value of impedance now multiply by i so it is simply this 30 upon s plus 1 is equal to 6 into i of s plus 3s into i of s so this is the equation 6 i of s plus 3s into i of s is equal to 30s uh, 30 upon s plus 1 or on this side i have written it as minus 30 upon s plus 1 is equal to 0 then taken on this side i can take here i of s as common so it will be 6 plus 3s into i of s so 6 plus 3s i can take 3 again common so 3 and this 30 So three ten the thirty. So I can write ten upon s plus one upon uh, and into s plus two, right? Because here it will remain s plus two. S plus two into I of s is equal to ten upon s plus one. So that is nothing but oh, there's this s plus two I have taken on this side. So this I of s will become ten upon s plus one into s plus two. Now this is the value of i of s that is the current value i have found out in the transform domain so this value is in s domain now usually we want this value of current in time domain that's why we are taking inverse laplace of this so for taking inverse laplace of this you have to find out the partial fractions of this so that means a upon s plus 1 plus b upon s plus 2 so find out values of a and b and then you substitute it here and take inverse laplace now we know laplace transform of e raised to minus t it is 1 upon s plus 1 so inverse laplace of 1 upon s plus 1 will become e raised to minus t and laplace transform of e raised to minus 2t it is 1 upon s plus 2 So here, inverse Laplace of one upon s plus two will become e raised to minus two t, and the coefficients as it is, I have take, uh, written here. So as the partial fraction values, uh, value of a is becoming as uh, is coming as ten, and b is coming as minus ten. So I have written here ten e raised to minus t minus ten e raised to minus two t. So this is the value of i of t. So which i have found out within two three steps or five steps so that means in one page you can solve this problem in s domain whereas in time domain you will require a lot of time and space okay so now in this expression if you will find this first term is uh, uh, expressing the forced response whereas the second term is expressing the natural response okay and in this the time constant value it is um, as it is a rl circuit series rl circuit we know it is l by r so l by r means it is l value is given as 3 by 6 so it is 1 by 2 so time constant is 1 by 2 and damping factor if you want to calculate it is coming as 2 so these are the steps to solve the problem using laplace transform step 1 is to convert the network from time domain to s domain that is transform domain and then write the equation or you can write equation in time domain even that is 6 into i of t plus 3 uh, di by dt 3 into dit by dt is equal to 30 Into e raised to minus t. So this expression you can write after applying KVL. <coughs> In time domain also you can write the expression, and then you take Laplace transform of that expression. So it will lead to the same value as this. So we what we have done, we have transformed the circuit in uh, time domain into S domain, 
and after transforming the circuit we have applied the kvl to that so it will result the same uh, answer okay so that's why i have written first step as convert the network from either time domain to s domain and then write the equation or first write the time domain equations and then take laplace transform to convert it into s domain so it will result to the s domain equation the same equation which is this okay so after getting this equation we have to take <coughs> we have to make partial fractions of it so making partial fractions of it is the step 2 and then step 3 after making partial fractions you have to take inverse laplace transform of it so after taking inverse laplace transform you will get the value of i of t so in this way we can solve the numericals now i uh, hope you will be able to solve the numericals in unit 2 which we have already solved in time domain so same you can solve using frequency domain or s domain okay now network functions so in this third unit we have seen the parameters z parameters z11 is v1 by i1 z12 is v1 by i2 z22 is v2 by i2 z21 is v2 by i1 so all these parameters z parameter then y parameter h parameter and abcd parameter so all these parameters we have found out the values in terms of v and i in time domain that means it is this z11 if you want uh, you can express it as v1 of t upon i1 of t okay this y parameter y11 i1 of t divided by v1 of t this h11 v1 of t divided by i1 of t this abcd a parameter v1 of t upon v2 of t so all these were functions in time domain so same time domain functions you can solve it in laplace domain also so for one port network and two port network which is in your syllabus so for two port network we have already seen these are the parameters and for one port network one port network means it is having only one port that is only input port is there that means only v1 and i1 are there so there will be uh, that is v and i okay so it will be ratio of v and i or i and v that's all okay and for two port network as there are four variables v1 i1 v2 i2 and uh, for these two port networks there may be Uh, excite one will be excitation and another will be response so these are the two active elements excitation and response means what excitation is the input and response is the output and along with three passive elements that is resistance inductance and capacitance so such will be the two port network now resistance in s domain will remain as if it is resistance r inductance you have to replace it by s into l and for capacitance if value is c you have to replace it by 1 upon c into s okay and for v you will replace it by capital v of s i will be i of s that is excitation and response so it is very easy to solve the numericals in s domain we'll see that so this uh, network functions z of s it is given as v of s upon i of s that is the relationship and the driving point impedance driving point admittance if you want to find everywhere you have to write z11 of s v1 of s i1 of s so this will be function of s and in previous case that is till now which we have seen it was in time domain so here it will be in laplace domain that is the only difference rest ratios are the same okay so uh, for one port network we'll solve a numerical today and uh, for two port network we'll see tomorrow because i hope uh, time will not permit us today so for uh, one port network v and i are the voltage and uh, current at terminal only one port is there 11 dash so driving point impedance function 
z of s it is given as v of s upon i of s and driving point admittance function it is reciprocal of that that is i of s upon v of s that is y of s okay so let us say this is the network simple network given to you some uh, voltage source v then r is the resistance inductor value l and capacitor having value c okay so in transform domain will replace this v of t as by v of s so capital v of s then this r will remain as it as it is r s will be replaced by s into l and c will be replaced by 1 over s into c now if we'll apply kvl for this particular loop v is v of s equal to i of s into bracket r plus sl plus 1 over sc so if we'll take ratio of v of s upon i of s that is nothing but z of s so z of s is equal to v of s upon i of s it is equal to r plus sl plus 1 over sc and if you want to find y of s that is i of s upon v of s that is 1 upon z of s z uh, of s so that is nothing but 1 upon r plus sl plus 1 over sc so that is if we we'll simplify this it will become s into c divided by r c s plus l c s square plus 1 or you can write this in the form l c s square plus r c s plus 1 okay so that is the standard form now if you want to uh, find the driving point impedance of this network network is given to you value is 5 ohm 4 ohm 3 ohm 1 ohm and z of s we want to find okay so how to find if we'll see current if it is flowing here it is div uh, divided here so this branch is in parallel with this if you want to find equivalent impedance in time domain this branch resistance you have to find then this resistance it is in parallel with this and it is in series with this okay so in transform domain what we'll do we'll first transform this network into s domain so that this 3 will remain as it is 3 this inductor 1 henry will become 1 into s this 4 ohm resistance will remain as it is 4 ohm this 5 ohm resistance will remain as it is 5 now if you want to find this equivalent impedance that is 3 plus s is parallel with 4 so 3 plus s parallel with 4 it will result 3 plus s into 4 divided by 3 plus s plus 4 that is 12 plus 4 is divided by s plus 7 so this is the equivalent impedance of this now plus 5 so z of s is equal to 5 plus this term that is 5s plus 35 plus 12 plus 4s divided by s plus 7 that is equal to 9s plus 47 divided by s plus 7 so this is all about the first or you can solve this numerical also uh, i hope time will permit find the driving point admittance of this network if you want to find driving point admittance of this particular network then how it will be for this y1 of s you find for this y2 of s you find for this y3 of s you find and then some y1s plus y2s plus y3s now first transform this into s domain 5 will remain as it is 5 this 3 will also remain as it is 3 1 henry will become s into 1 so this s this 2 will remain as it is 2 this 1 by 3 it it is the value of c so we have to replace it by 1 upon c into s so that is 1 upon s into c is 1 upon 3 so that is 3 by s okay so what will be admittance for this it will be 1 upon 2 uh, that is impedance z it is um, 1 upon 5 it should be so it will be 1 upon 5 that is 0.2 ohm more than 
this 3 plus s its reciprocal will be y2s so y2s it will be 1 upon s plus 3 and y3s will be 2 plus s by 3 so 1 upon 2 plus s by 3 that is s upon 2s plus 3 so values of y1 y2 and y3 you got now add these three values so that will give you the total admittance so y of s it is equal to y1 of s plus y2 of s plus y3 of s that is 0.2 plus 1 upon s plus 3 plus s upon 2 s plus 3 simplify this you will get y of s equal to 1.4 s square plus 6.8 s plus 4.8 divided by 2 s square plus 9 s plus 9 okay so i hope you understood this uh, so this is uh, driving point impedance for one port network we have finished now for two port network we'll uh, start and finish in next lecture okay and probably we'll be taking uh, extra lecture uh, by this weekend okay so try to attend this extra lectures so that will finish off this unit number three. If you are having any doubts, we'll take one lecture for that.